Hello, I'm Niraj. Today I will discuss about uh, deep clustering. Deep clustering is a self-supervised algorithm. Self-supervised in the sense that it uh, does not require label training data to train the system. Then you may ask that how such kind of systems are working. It is very easy to understand. Actually, what happens? All such kind of systems use some deep learning network. They pass the raw data through deep learning network. The deep learning network uses the forward pass to generate some feature output, some fixed dimensionality feature output. Then we apply unsupervised labeling algorithm. For example, if your target is classification, then we cluster those output because it is equivalent in the unsupervised case. So we use those unsupervised labels as a pseudo label. And then consider that we have a label data with those pseudo labels and start back propagation to train the network. The, the back propagation actually upgrades the parameter theta, network parameter theta and neuron weights. So next time when we repeat the iteration, like we again pass the raw data through the same network it generates the more sophisticated output and when we apply the same unsupervised labeling algorithm it will generate better result and next time when we use the result as a pseudo labels then it will be a better quality pseudo label and that better quality pseudo label when we apply to train the system through back propagation, it will automatically upgrade the parameter network parameter theta and uh, neuron widths and upgrade the system also. So after some cycles until we uh, get some convergence criteria, we can get a very good uh, trained model without having any label data and its accuracy will be very much near to the supervised algorithm having best good quality level data and it will be better than unsupervised algorithm. So now let us try to understand in the case of deep clustering like how it is working. Actually I had gone through a lot of papers in this area but I found that uh, the paper like published in ECCB 2018 is uh, one of the good basic paper to go through and after that uh, if you have a basic uh, mathematical background to understand machine learning and deep learning then you can easily understand all the incremental and uh, other changes or advancement in this work. So let us go through this paper. Actually in the deep clustering the authors have used uh, ImageNet input data. So ImageNet, actually ImageNet input data contains millions of images that is manually labeled into more than 20,000 classes. Now to get the data in a raw format like without having labels, they directly pass the data to the component. The component is actually a convolutional neural network with some stacks. So each of those stacks of convolutional neural network may contain at least one convolution layer and one pooling layer and another stack may also contain one convolution and one pooling layer and uh, it may continue based on the requirements. So after three four stacks of uh, convolutional neural network when the data passes through this it generates fixed dimensionality output vectors. This is very important. Fixed dimensionality input output. Now to generate the labels for classification, we use clustering algorithm. And in this paper, authors have used k-means clustering algorithm. Here we have k equal to 3 as per diagram given in the paper. So what happens, the images 
which are converted to fixed dimensionality feature vectors got clustered into three clusters like cluster C1, C2 and C3 by K-means clusters. Now we consider cluster C1 as a pseudo class level C1, cluster C2 as a pseudo class level C2 and cluster C3 as a pseudo class level C3. And then we apply the back propagation. So with this back propagation, the network parameter theta and neuron weights get updated. After that, as a next cycle, we again pass the input through the weight updated component architecture. So in this case, the system will generate more better fixed dimensionality feature vector output for each of the images. Now when we again apply the k-means clustering, it will give you better clusters. And now when you we, when we use those clusters as a class level, pseudo class levels, then we will have a better quality pseudo class levels. And when we use those better quality class pseudo class levels for back propagation or training purpose, then it will give more better means uh, more better direction or uh, better upgradation of network parameters theta and neuron weights. We will continue this cycle until we get some convergence criteria. So after convergence criteria, we can save our model like M1. Now what are the things or advantage of using such things when we compare it with clustering? So suppose if you have some test data set T1, if you pass this test data set T1 to M1 model, then it will give something like uh, 90 or 90 plus percent accuracy. And just I want to say this, suppose, and same test data, if you pass through the clustering algorithm, like same k-means, it may give like a 70 or 60 percent accuracy. So you will, even in the real examples, you will find that huge differences between the results of an unsupervised algorithm and this self-supervised deep clustering type of algorithms. In other different different varieties, instead of convenate, they are using uh, encoder decoder architecture. Even for encoder decoder architecture, the same data is used uh, for training and test. So because of encoder or decoder, we keep the input and output same. So we keep some data, take some data from intermediate and achieve the same kind of strategy that I discussed here. So this is the benefit of deep, uh, means uh, deep clustering or such kind of self-supervised learning. Here the things are we didn't uh, label our input data, but still we have a classifier near with near accuracy that we can achieve through a labeled input data. Now the next thing is, these days actually we are facing a lot of challenges due to huge evolution of new new fields. So every time labeling those data or covering those data which are dynamically changes with time is very tough and costly. So in that cases such kind of algorithms will be very useful. Now we will go through in more details and try to understand that how such algorithms are actually working.